Hello students, let us start the class. We have been seeing the small signal model of JFET and we had discussed the expression for the fixed bias circuit and just to recall we had derived that Z equals RG looking at this particular uh, small signal model and Z naught is capital RD in parallel with small RD and we will not be using this approximate equation we will always be using the upper equation itself. Now accordingly we can write an expression for the output voltage as minus gm into vgs that minus sign is because of the phase shift in the common source circuitry. So this gm into vgs is nothing but the current source at the drain side into the output resistance is small rd in parallel with capital rd but this vgs itself is nothing but vi so then we have av equals v naught by vi that is nothing but minus gm into small rd parallel with capital rd now please remember these three expressions now z equals rg z naught equals rd parallel with rd and av equals minus gm into rd parallel with rd so using these expressions let us solve an exercise on the fixed bias network of jfet so this is exercise number 3 in this particular set of slides the following circuit has an operating point defined by vgs q equals minus 2 volts idq equal 5.625 milliampere and uh, instead of rd he has given yos instead of the drain resistance he has given the uh, drain conductance or the output conductance with respect to source this y stands for the conductance o stands for the output and s stands for the common source configuration it is given as 40 microsiemens now it is asked to find zi z naught and av now look at this expression rg is 1 mega ohms so directly we can write zi equals rg equals 1 mega ohm similarly z naught we can write capital rd parallel with small rd that small rd is nothing but 1 over yos so we can compute both of them once we compute both of them we can directly find out av as minus gm into capital rd in parallel with small rd but we have to find out the transconductance now we have to find out gm for finding out gm he has already given the get to source voltage in the quiescent region and the drain current during the quiescent conditions so directly we can find out gm during the quiescent conditions so otherwise this exercise is quite simple let me show you the solutions now gm0 is 2 into 10 milliampere divided by 8 see this idss is given and vp is given we know that gm0 is nothing but 2 idss by vp and we need not apply this minus sign because the conductance cannot be negative so we get gm0 is 2 into idss divided by vp that is 2 into 10 milliampere divided by 8 we get 2.5 millisiemens once we get it we can find out gm using gm0 we already know that expression so that expression is gm equals gm0 into 1 minus 2 by 8 1 minus vgs by vp see vgs is given and vp already we know so 1 minus 2 by 8 gm we get around 1.875 millisiemens using this value we can easily find out the gain so now small rd is 1 over 40 microsiemens that is 25 kilo ohms is z not 1851 ohms okay good the cyan is already solving the exercise i will show you the answer now zi is 1 mega ohm directly we can substitute the value of rg because get to source is considered as open circuit as there is no gate current z naught is 25 kilo ohms in parallel with 2 kilo ohms that is around 1.85 kilo ohms 
सो सायन योर आंसर इज करेक्ट नेक्स्ट वी फाइंड आउट ए वी ए वी जी एम इन टू जड नॉट दट इज वी पुट अ माइनस साइन बिकॉज ऑफ द फेस शिफ्ट वन पॉइंट एट सेवन फाइव मिली इन टू वन पॉइंट एट फाइव किलो वी गेट अराउंड माइनस थ्री पॉइंट फोर सेवन नाउ इफ यू कंपेर द रिजल्ट हियर विद द रिजल्ट विच वी हैड ऑप्टेन यूजिंग बीजेटी वी कैन ईजीली सी दैट दर इज अ ड्रास्टिक इंप्रूवमेंट इन द इनपुट इंपिडेंस बट एज फार एस आउटपुट इंपिडेंस इज कंसर्न द सिमिलर टाइप ऑफ वैल्यूज टू किलो ओम्स थ्री किलो ओम्स वी यूज टू गेट विद बीजेटी बट यू कैन सी दैट एज फार एस द वोल्टेज गेन इज कंसर्न इट इज रियली वेरी लेस इन केस ऑफ बीजेटी वी यूज टू गेट वोल्टेज गेन्स इन बिटवीन हंड्रेड टू थ्री हंड्रेड बट इन द केस ऑफ जेफ एट वी आर गेटिंग अ वोल्टेज गेन विच इज हार्डली अ सिंगल डिजिट नंबर so we have to immediately come to a conclusion that jfet as an amplifier is not really very good jfet and mosfet both as amplifiers are not really very good but they are very good as switches still when we want to have a very high level amplification we are going to go for bjt even now otherwise in the case of pre amplifiers it is mostly mosfet only is used anyhow those things you are going to study when you come to third year in detail you are going to study more about mosfet so the immediate conclusion is jfet as well as mosfet circuits can uh, yield very high input impedance and that is the plus point when compared to vjt now the ac analysis of the self bias jfet amplifier with bypass capacitor is same as that of the fixed bias circuit that is why even with bjt we did not discuss that at all because there is going to be a bypass capacitor from emitter to ground and that is how as far as ac analysis is concerned we can directly consider emitter as grounded it is the same case with jfet as well let me move on to voltage divider configuration now now without me telling anything can you directly tell me the expression for input impedance without me telling anything can you directly give me the expression for input impedance by looking at this circuit diagram r1 parallel r2 yes it is r1 parallel with r2 that's all because gate to source is considered open circuit so naturally there is no gate current R1 other end is AC ground, so the ZI is R1 parallel with R2. Now, as far as the other things are concerned, is there any other difference as far as Z0 and as far as AV is concerned? Is there any different uh, approach, or is there any difference when compared to the fixed bias? No, sir. Same formula. Same formula, right? Why? because this cs the source capacitance is going to be coming in parallel with rs and as far as ac analysis is concerned source can be connected directly connected to ground that way all other things are same as that of the fixed bias circuit and this fact also we had seen along with the bjt so now the only change is in the input impedance so let me show you that when we write the ac analysis equivalent for the voltage divider bias configuration we will write r1 and r2 in parallel then the gate to source terminal is open circuit then the current source is gm into vgs then we have the dynamic drain resistance that is rd i cannot say it is dynamic i should say it is ac resistance and then we have a physical resistance capital rd so you can see that except for this r1 parallel with r2 nothing else is going to change so z is r1 parallel with r2 and z not is small r d parallel with capital r d as we had seen earlier and it is evident from the equivalent circuit and then anyhow this particular approximation we will not use at all now the author says that small r d when it is greater than or equal to 10 r d we can substitute z not approximately as capital r d itself but let us not bother about all those things 
So input is VGS itself. V naught is the same thing minus GM into VGS into small R D parallel with capital R D. So A V is V naught by V I equals minus GM into VGS into small R D parallel capital R divided by VGS. So we get A V as V naught by V I equals minus GM into small R D parallel with capital R D. This is the same as that of the fixed bias circuit. Okay, so it will be same for Z naught as well. Now, we we will not have any additional exercise on voltage order bias because the only difference between the previous circuit and the present circuit is that of Z i. Otherwise, everything is one and the same. So, A V, if R D is greater than or equal to ten of capital R D, then we can approximate this, but Anyhow, we are not going to use this approximation anywhere. Keep calm because it is the end. End of what? End of module two. Be happy. Be smiling. I will be starting module three now itself. So be sad for that also. Let me switch over to the next slide. Let me start module three now. Module three. In this particular module, we are uh, dealing with the BJT and JF together for its high frequency analysis. So BJT and JF frequency response. Before getting into the low frequency or high frequency analysis, let us understand. some few basics about what is the meaning of frequency response so let me start this module you can see in the picture frequency response of an amplifier now the x axis is frequency the y axis is voltage gain and you can see a particular curve on the screen now you can see that in the middle region there is a maximum gain but at the lower side the gain is lesser and at the higher side the gain is lesser the reason is in the circuit whether it is a jeffert circuit or a bjt circuit recall those circuits we have two capacitors there one is at the input side we call it as coupling capacitor sorry uh, blocking capacitor one at the output side we call it as a coupling capacitor now you already know that x equals 1 over 2 pi fc so when f is very low x is very high when f is zero x is infinity that means the capacitor is going to offer infinite reactance to the dc that is when we say capacitor blocks dc now when x equals 1 over 2 pi fc gradually we will increase the frequency you can see in the x axis frequency is increasing from 0 till it can go on it can go on for megahertz gigahertz terahertz and it can go on for petahertz oh, zeta hertz yotta hertz all that way exa all that way it can go on till 10 power 24 so in that case if x axis is frequency what we want is we want a uniform gain right from zero till infinity we want ideal response of the amplifier as let us say its midband gain is around 40 db we had worked out such exercises in bjt where let us say the gain is around 200 imagine the gain is around 200 this can always be converted into decibels that we will see later on let us say the gain is now 200 what we expect is that the amplifier should have the uniform gain right from 1 hertz till infinity hertz but that is an ideal frequency response the practical frequency response is only in the mid band you will have maximum gain otherwise the gain is lesser at the lower frequency side the gain is lesser at the higher frequency side now 
Why is the gain lesser at the lower frequency side? For which the answer is now obvious. Obvious answer is, as I mentioned about the input blocking capacitor and the output coupling capacitor, whenever we apply a signal at the input of an amplifier, because of Xc equals 1 over 2 pi Fc, when frequency is very less, Xc is very high and so the signal will be across the capacitor itself. Hardly any signal will reach the amplifier's input. The signal is almost at the capacitor itself. Just like in some of our government schemes, let us say the government is releasing funds to the farmer. All the way when it reaches to the farmer, if the government has released 1 lakh, to the farmer, maybe 1000 rupees will reach. In between, there are so many mediators, they will all swallow this thing. You can visualize in the same way. Okay. Of course, in the present government, we feel that somewhat better administration is there. That is our hope. Anyway, now the thing is, in the lower frequency side, when uh, input signal frequency is very less, the capacitance will have very high reactance. So you already know the voltage divider rule, which means along with the capacitance, if there's an amplifier and if the amplifier is having an input impedance, just visualize the capacitor's reactance and the input impedance together. That means Xc in series with Zi. At lower frequencies, Xc will be much larger. In that particular case, all the signal amplitude will be across Xc itself or across capacitor itself. That is the primary reason for the reduced gain in the lower frequency band. Okay. Next, in the higher frequency band, again, why the gain will be reduced? The reason is there in the picture shown below. Now, the transistor will have its own junction capacitances. That means between base to collector, there is a junction and the junction will have a depletion region around it. Similarly, between base to emitter, there is again one more junction and this junction will have a depletion region. That depletion region is nothing but a capacitance there. What is the general meaning of depletion? Depletion means it is depleted of charge carriers. Now, when it is depleted of charge carriers, what does it mean? It means that between that P and N, because of the recombination of the charge carriers there, it will become a neutralized area. That neutralized area will have its own barrier potential. That is when we call it as a depletion region and naturally that neutralized area is behaving like a capacitance now. Otherwise, what is basically a capacitance? A capacitance is two plates separated by a dielectric medium. The dielectric medium is nothing but an insulator, right? So, strictly speaking, through the capacitor, nothing moves. Only from one plate to the other plate, there is an electrostatic induction. Otherwise, in between the two plates, there is a insulating material. So, actually nothing moves across the capacitor. Even if AC is being allowed through the capacitor, it is only because of the electrostatic inductive effect. Otherwise, in between there is an insulator. Now, when there is an insulator, it is again a neutralized region, we should say. In the same way, in the PN junction, it is a neutralized junction. So, because of which it is depleted of charge carriers and we can represent it by means of a capacitance. That means, between base and collector, there is a capacitance. Between base and emitter, there is a capacitance. But in the normal working operation, this capacitance can be ignored because this capacitance is really very small. The capacitance will be in the order of femtofarad or etofarad or maybe zeptofarad or yoctofarad. It will not be in microfarad or nanofarad or picofarad. For that matter, it will be in the order of 10 power minus 15 till 10 power minus 24. But in our present technology, even 10 power 24 also is possible, 10 power minus 24 also is possible. 
if you have watched the movie rajnikanth's movie yendiran or in hindi also it came as robo those who have not watched the movie should watch the movie that the robo tells the specification memory 1 zettabyte speed 1 terahertz it says that way memory is 1 zettabyte okay beta exa zeta iota that means zettabyte means 10 power 21 bytes so two or three decades before we were discussing only about terahertz and about uh, picoseconds now later on we will be talking about 10 power 15 10 power 18 10 power 21 10 power 24 similarly on the negative scale we will be discussing about 10 power minus 15 10 power minus 18 10 power minus 21 10 power minus 24 when you come to third year you will have a lab called cmos vlsi lab when you work in the lab remember my words for today and remember the same thing till next year that when you work in the cmos vlsi lab you will see the parasitic elements in each analog circuitry where you will measure this parasitic capacitances whatever is the junction capacitance i am not talking about you will see those junction capacitance values when you work with the one eda tool when you work with the electronic design automation tool where the tool will show you the capacitances in the range of femtofarad and attofarad that means when we work with the speed of maybe 1 gigahertz or 1 terahertz even a minute capacitance of 1 femtofarad or 1 attofarad cannot be ignored cannot be ignored so in such condition when we work with very high frequencies even a very small capacitance value will also have effect why now x equals 1 over 2 pi fc right when f is very large x is very less even if this c is in the order of femtofarad or attofarad when f is very large x is very less that means when the input signal is coming to the base of this transistor from the base to emitter earlier there was only a junction now this junction's capacitance is in femtofarad now when the frequency is let us say 1 terahertz even the small capacitance can bypass it to ground you understand the point now we don't want that the signal that is coming to the base of the transistor should go to ground what we want is the signal should be amplified by the switching action of the transistor it must be available at the collector but between base and emitter there is a diode now and the diode will have a inherent junction capacitance and this capacitance may bypass that particular ac which is coming at the base now at a very high frequency not at a very low frequency why at a very low frequency this capacitance in the order of femtofarad right when you visualize that x equals 1 over 2 pi fc that c is 10 power minus 15 so when f is less x c does not matter that x will be larger there please understand right from zero till this particular value of f2 this capacitance which is from the base to emitter can be totally ignored because here that xc of this capacitance will be really very large but when frequency becomes very large even this xc cannot be ignored if you don't understand these facts right now you don't worry because in the whole of this module i am going to tell you the same thing again and again and again okay right now i am telling you only a basic introduction about how should you understand this particular frequency response if you don't understand all these things immediately you don't have to worry we will have the mathematical exercises for the same thing in the whole of this module this complete module is the discussion of frequency response only nothing else now apart from the junction capacitance we have something called wiring capacitance whenever we connect an amplifier input to the amplifier is also by means of a wire output to the amplifier is also by means of a wire actually wire will have all, always two wires now right one is ground one is that particular output or input wire which means there will always be two wires okay that is also fine 
Now, when we have these two wires, other one is ground, right? The wire is a conductor. Now, other one is a ground. Now, in between those two, there is that plastic insulator. Now, this plastic insulator around the wire will work like a dielectric medium. Now, you may say, sir, it's an insulator. Yes, it is an insulator. It is supposed to insulate the copper conductor. But whenever we have two conductors and whenever we have insulator in between, what is it? Without our own knowledge, that wire is going to work like a capacitor. When that wire is going to work like a capacitor, now we have that stray wiring capacitance. You get that point? We did not want the stray wiring capacitance, but it is part of the system now. Now, you cannot say that we should not use an insulating uh, plastic around the copper wire. Can we use the bare copper wire just like that? We cannot. Just visualize your electric wiring at home. Can you use a bare copper wire anywhere? You cannot. The bare cap copper wire will get rusted out after the few years. So, we have to protect this bare copper wire or a conductor by means of a protective sheet. For the protective sheet, we have to use insulator only. That is what is plastic. Now, without our intention, we are putting a dielectric medium in between the conducting wire and the ground wire. Now, without our knowledge, we will have a capacitance there. In general, we call it as a parasitic capacitance. Parasitic capacitance means the capacitance which was unwanted. Again, visualize the amplifier circuit. We have that uh, blocking capacitor and coupling capacitor. They are actually required for blocking DC and for passing AC. So, they are physical capacitors. They are not parasitic. But the capacitance which is across the base to emitter junction, which becomes predominant in the high frequency band, now this is working like a parasitic capacitor. We don't want it, but it is present. Similarly, in the wire, there is this parasitic capacitance, which is also called as a stray wiring capacitance. We don't want it, but it is present. Now, we will have to bear them because we cannot completely eliminate them. When you are staying at home, you don't want cockroaches there, you don't want lizards there, you don't want ants there. Right? You want your house to be completely clean. But you, without your own knowledge or without your own invitation, at times some cockroach will come inside, gradually it will live in a particular corner and it will have its own family. Ants will come inside, lizards will come inside. Even though it is your own home, there are these parasitic creatures, you did not invite them, they stayed there and they are going to stay there. How much ever you may clean, to some extent, these parasitic creatures will remain there. Now, what is the point now? You will have to bear with these parasitic creatures. Whenever you find a cockroach, you will kill it. Whenever you find a lizard, you will run away from it, right? But you cannot expect a home not having these creatures. Same way in our circuitry, we cannot have ideal functionality in any of our circuitries and these parasitics will become predominant, especially in the high frequency band. Right. Right now I am speaking to laptop and you are listening to your mobile or laptop and in between us there is this wired connection and there will also be Wi-Fi connection for you or the cellular network connection for you, isn't it? Now in between you and me, if this communication is happening, in spite of all these parasitic elements, this communication is happening. In between you and me, there is lot of atmospheric noise, there is lot of parasitic uh, passive elements like resistance, capacitance and inductance, even in the wiring that is inside the laptop. Because even inside the laptop, it is basically copper wiring only. Now, 
in between you and me if at all we are using this wi-fi connection the frequency of operation is 2.4 gigahertz you can think about this frequency now it is 2.4 gigahertz now for the 2.4 gigahertz even if a parasitic element is there in the circuit it is going to affect that is why i told you more the frequency more will be the issues now and we should have countermeasures about how to overcome these high frequency effects we are not much bothered about the low frequency gain problem even though we have a reduced gain in the low frequency band we are not worried why the reason is we are using a 2.4 gigahertz radio frequency now right all the 3g phones are going to use 2.4 gigahertz so we are not really much worried about the lower side of the frequency band now when 3g becomes 4g 4g becomes 5g gradually signal will be 60 gigahertz 50 gigahertz 60 gigahertz already 5g is in place now think about the 60 gigahertz radio frequency which is going to be utilized in the laptop wi-fi connections or in the mobile phone connections and now you think about the parasitic elements which are present in the circuitry all over that is where the challenge is and that is why we are discussing this particular module fine let me proceed if at all you have any questions you can ask me in the chat box or you can unmute and ask also otherwise let me proceed it is the graph of the gain versus frequency y axis is gain v not by vi and x axis is frequency that is why this is called as frequency response at low frequencies the decrease in voltage gain is due to the external discrete capacitors i have given different colors there it is due to the external discrete capacitors which i had mentioned earlier that external capacitor is the blocking capacitor and the coupling capacitor why they are called discrete capacitors they are physically present there at high frequencies the decrease in voltage gain is due to the internal device capacitances this also i have highlighted in different colors it is the internal capacitance it is the device capacitance i spoke about these things at length the internal device capacitances are parasitic capacitances where the external discrete capacitances are actually the required capacitances the external wiring shunt capacitance also affects the high frequency gain why is it called as a shunt capacitance because from the output to ground there is this stray wiring capacitance so when the output signal is coming here it can be bypassed to ground by means of this stray wiring capacitance and we will have a reduction in gain at the high frequency band can anyone tell me what for is this 0.707 you just observe this there is this f1 there is this f2 you can ignore this 10f1.1 f2 for the time being whenever we plot this frequency response we mark a point on this particular curve which is corresponding to 0.707 of maximum voltage gain and we mark this point f1 here we mark one more point f2 here then we call the complete bandwidth of this circuit as f2 minus f1 can anyone tell me what for is this 0.707 because you have studied this amplifier concept already in basic electronics does anyone remember everybody is silent except me uh okay at least cyan is answering in the chat box is it for the already fixed voltage silicon no it has nothing to do with the silicon as such it has something to do with the amplifier's response anybody else has any other answer rms value <laughs> okay okay fine it has resemblance with rms value but it is not actually rms value just because it is 1 over root 2 it is 0.707 that way you are correct mitesh has given this answer 
it is 1 over root 2 is nothing but 0.707. That is correct. But it is not RMS value. In fact, RMS value stands for root mean square, which means when you have to compare the effect of AC and DC together, when you take an average of AC signal, it will be zero, right? Positive cycle and negative cycle together, when you take an average, it is zero. Now, when an AC goes into the fan, it will have an effect. Even when the DC goes into the fan, even the DC fan will move. There are DC motors as well as AC motors. When AC goes into the iron box, iron box will heat up. Even if the DC goes into the iron box, iron box will heat up. Because there is a coil inside the iron box. Now, how do we compare AC and DC together? That is when what they do is, they will take some samples on the AC signal and they will square it. Square it in the sense even the negative side of the waveform should become positive now. When they square it, they take its mean. After that, they take its square root. Now, that will be equivalent to the RMS value, which is equivalent to DC. Which means, let us say you are using 220 volts AC. That 220 volts AC is RMS, which is equivalent to 220 volts DC. Otherwise, the AC is continuously changing, right? When the AC signal is continuously changing, it is not having a fixed 220 volts value. It will go to the positive peak, it will come back to zero. It will go to the negative peak, it will come back to zero. So, the peak voltage is much larger. You can calculate it. If it is 220 volts RMS, its one peak will be around 314 volts. So, peak to peak voltage for your regular AC, which you are using at home is around 628 volts. That is why it is going to give you electric shock. And it is releasing you whenever there is a zero crossover. If at all you use a 628 volts DC, it will never give you a chance to run away. It will catch you permanently. So, DC is much more dangerous than AC in that way. Because AC will at least have a zero crossover. DC will never have any such thing. So, the effective value of 628 volts peak to peak AC signal is 220 volts RMS. That is when we compare AC with DC as such as a net effect. But this 0.707 or this 1 over root 2 is not because of that. Because for an amplifier we are giving input signal also AC, we are taking output signal also AC. We are not going to measure the RMS voltage here in the lab. We are always going to measure the peak to peak voltage. We are electronics engineers. We are not worried about what electrical engineers do. Electrical engineers use always RMS for their transformers, for their generators, for their motors. We electronic engineers always use peak to peak signal as such. Because ours is audio signal, video signal, radio signal. So, it is not the RMS value. Any other answer? Any other answer? No other answer. Let me tell you. The answer is, how do we actually measure the bandwidth in this particular curve? Look at this curve. Where exactly should we measure the bandwidth? Because this curve is now non-linear, right? We are using a device that is non-linear. So, the curve is actually non-linear, right? The curve is linear only in the middle region. The curve is basically a straight line in the middle region. Otherwise, it is gradually coming down here. Now, if at all I have to tell that the bandwidth of my circuit is let us say 100 kilohertz or 100 megahertz. How do I measure the bandwidth? I will have to mark two points here. Where shall I mark the two points? Shall I mark it somewhere here, somewhere here? No. Why? Because it is still progressing down. When this is still progressing down, as it is a non-linear curve, I can't distinctly mark any point. Now, we engineers have to be very precise in our measurements. If at all we give the freedom for the people who are measuring, they may mark any two points somewhere here and somewhere here and they may assume things that everywhere it is a straight line. But if you magnify this particular portion, wherever there is a reduction in gain, if you magnify this particular portion, then there can be minute details there. Remember, we are dealing with gigahertz and terahertz. So, we have to be careful now. 
in such a case if you magnify this portion at the lower frequency band you will not have larger difference because it is 100 hertz 1000 hertz 10 kilohertz but at the upper frequency we are dealing with gigahertz and terahertz so we have to be careful about where to mark this point now where to mark this point it cannot be of a personal interest of that particular engineer there must be a single standard for every engineer to mark these two points so what the thought was they thought let us go for a point where the power is 50 percent of the maximum power that means here in the middle region the gain is maximum so naturally the power is maximum power is voltage into current that power is maximum here now let us come to a conclusion where we want to measure a point where power is reduced to half of the maximum power how do you find it out p equals v into i so p by 2 is v into i by 2 right p by 2 is v into i by 2 now v into i by 2 can be written as v by root 2 and i by root 2 why we have to split that v into i because we are measuring the voltage gain here we are not plotting a curve of current gain we are plotting a, cur a curve of voltage gain voltage gain is easy to measure we can always see the signals amplitude in the oscilloscope we can easily measure current cannot be seen that way so it is always easy to plot voltage gain versus frequency or frequency versus voltage gain now when we say p by 2 equals v i by 2 it is v by root 2 into i by root 2 that v by root 2 itself is this 0.707 into a v mid i think you got it it is not corresponding to the rms value even though it is a coincidence that here we have root 2 that is actually v i by 2 is v by root 2 into i by root 2 v by root 2 is nothing but 0.707 into the mid band gain which is maximum gain now the next question is why do we take 50 percent of the power now that is a general conclusion right anywhere in life between 0 percent and 100 percent we take 50 percent as the normal threshold now for example let us say i take my feedback from your class out of 60 students let us say 31 students say that arvinda sir is a good teacher and 29 students say that arvinda sir is a bad teacher now i have 31 students who are appreciating me even though 29 students may not appreciate me i am above 51 50 percent right that is the general decision making threshold even in the assembly what do they do there must be a 50 percent 51 percent majority even in the multinational companies or any companies as such what do they do whoever is having the 51 percent stock or 51 percent shareholder he will become the managing director of the company so if somebody has to become a managing director of any company he will have to have at least 51 percent of the uh, share remaining 49 percent can be either from the public or from the trustees or from his own family members that way in general this 50 percent is the threshold okay that is why when in life itself that 50 percent is the threshold naturally whatever we take it in life we apply to our technology as well because ultimately we are the decision makers for our circuits that is when those engineers decided let there be a 50 percent threshold that 50 percent threshold is in terms of power that is p by 2 p by 2 is v i by 2 v i by 2 is v by root 2 into i by root 2 so remember this particular fact and remember if at all i i come as a lab examiner for you the same question i will ask as y1 hope that i will not come as a lab examiner to you but due to your bad luck if at all i come to you your lab exam i will definitely ask this particular question okay remember that so in all the frequency response curves in future throughout our life 
تھرو آؤٹ آور لائف ایز انجینئر ایز الیکٹرانکس انجینئر اور ایز الیکٹرانکس اینڈ کمیونیکیشن انجینئر وی ول کیپ آن پلاٹنگ سچ فریکوینسی ریسپانس کروس فار سو مینی سرکٹس اینڈ ایوری ویئر دا سرکٹ از گوئنگ ٹو بی دا سیم اینڈ دا پلاٹ از گوئنگ ٹو بی دا سیم ایکسپٹ فار اپ ایم سرکٹس اونلی ان دا آپریشن ایمپلیفائر سرکٹس ایز دے آر ڈائریکٹلی کپلڈ سرکٹس یو ول ہیو اے سلائٹ ڈفرینس دیر ادروائز فار آل دی سرکٹس دس پلاٹ آف فریکوینسی ریسپانس از گوئنگ ٹو بی دا سیم so in all those frequency responses the method also is going to be the same means what you will measure 0.707 of ev mid there you will mark a point then again at the upper side you will mark a point these two points you will extend down you will calculate you will measure this f2 and you will measure this f1 then you will write bandwidth equals f2 minus f1 Now there is no ambiguity for anybody to mark where to have this particular point, right? Now this is a global method. Global method means anywhere on earth, anybody when they measure a bandwidth, it is the same uh, method they are going to follow. They are going to mark 0.707 of maximum voltage gain and they are going to have this F2 minus F1 as bandwidth. Okay, with this particular point, let me end today's class. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Otherwise, I'll end the class now. Do you have any questions now? Before me ending the meeting, students are leaving the meeting. I have very good students. Okay, okay. let me end the class. Yeah, you have any question? Someone try to speak something. No, sir. No, sir. Fine. So, let me end the class for today. See you in the next class.